We begin the current daf Masech this condition of Lama Tess. We begin eight lines down at the top of the Amid, where the Gemara continues the discussion of the previous daf, discussing the halachis, which the Mishnah had said, Mitzvah Satluyas Ba'aretz is only going to be in Eretz Yisrael. If it's not, it could be, it's everywhere, except for Arla and Klayim. Even though the Tluyas Ba'aretz are agricultural halachas, they're still going to be even in Chutzlaretz. The Gemara continues the discussion regarding this halacha of Arla. Are three opinions regarding the Isra Arla Chutzlarts. Either it's Asim de Raisa, Asim de Rabbanan, or actually Mutter. The Isra Klein Chutzlarts, which was the other one that we mentioned. He said Chutzman Arla by Klein, those are Tanakama. So there's three different types of Klein that we're going to discuss regarding Harkavas Elon, grafting trees, Klai Hakarim, when you have a forbidden mixture in the vineyard, and Klai is Rhyme, which have a forbidden mixture. Of different types of grains. Then we continue with the halacha, the next mission, which is more agadic, which it says, "Kol oisim mitzah achas." Whoever does one mitzah, matibin lay, they do good to him. Marichin lo yomah, but they lend in his days. When nechlas aretz, and inherits the land. We'll discuss exactly what is that reward. <coughs> then we discuss the famous mission, "Mesech is paid." We say every single morning, "Berchas atayra." Elu dvarim shod meichum perisim bol mazer. I can't give him a These are the things that you eat. It's produce. You get the benefits. You get dividends in this world. But the principle remains for the person in the world to come. And the concept of Shechar Mitzvah Hayamba regarding do we get reward in this world or not. Regarding Machshav Ha'ra, in HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mitzvah Ha'ra, if a person has a bad thought, HaKadosh Baruch will not combine that to action. And the one-known concept of Shluchim Mitzvah in the Zaykin, those who are going on a Mitzvah mission, don't get harmed. Not when they're going and not when they are coming back. So beginning to our daf, we had mentioned regarding that Arla is Halacha. This Arla applies even Chutzla is through Halacha. We had a Machlik, it's Rabbi Yechonon and Shmuel. Rabbi Yechonon says Halacha Mitzvah Mitzvah and therefore, it's midday raisa. But even so, Safik Arlo, we said, Yari Belekech, Babach, let you like it. We said, and Chutzlar, it's one may ask a non Jew to pick Safik Arlo of him, provided that it's not actually the same pick. And according to Shmuel, it makes sense, Alchazam Medina, it's only as a Drabanan. But according to Rabbi Yechonon, why could you do that? So the Gemara explained, because Kach Nemar, yeah, that the Sveikam is Mutter, but Vada is Asr. That. Um, that the, it's, 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 it's doubt was, was, was permitted and, 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 and it's <coughs> definite is forbidden. Actually, that's where the Gemara continues right now. In the middle of that discussion, eight lines down at the top of the Yomad, Naf Lamates, the Gemara continues and actually is going to save this right now. Amri Kharifa de Pumbadas, de Pumbadisa. The sharp ones of Pumbadisa refers to Eifa and Avimi, the sons of Rechava from Pumbadisa. They say, Ain Arla Bukhutzart. There's no Allah of Arla Bukhutzart. There's no problem about a fruit tree in the first three years. You plant that lemon tree, you can go ahead and use it in those first three years. But Shlacher, Rabbi Huda, came to Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Huda sent his mother Rabbi Yechanan. Shalach lay, he sent him that what you mean to say is, is that when you have a doubt regarding our let's permitted, and this is what we said in the previous stuff, but when it's definite, it's going to be forbidden. Because Sosoim Safeka, this permission of the Suffolk, that you're saying that there's no Arla in Chutzlarz, and this is what we, like we said, the discussion in the previous stuff. Was discussing that Mishnah Masech this Orla that told the, the Salacha that when you have a Suffolk Orla, you can be lenient. That heter of Suffolk, rule that discreetly. Don't darshan that in public because people are going to be lenient in regarding this. As Rashi says, we find similarly the Gemara in the Dom of Chav Gimel and Beis, and regarding a different teacher, Abu Nebuchadnezzar held that he was going to darshan this in the Joshua. So Rabbi said to him, no. The Tana said this discreetly, and you're going to go darshan in the parak. Obviously, he says Rashi says it means that means to say keep it under wraps, and that's if it's safek arla. But va'avid vada. But when it's definite arla, you have to destroy it because since they're lenient, don't be lenient for them. Don't permit them to make be masapik zazeh. The previous line the Gemara had told us before these lines over here from the, what we said from the previous daf. Was that let's say Rav Api Rav Rav Chana Masafku Masafku LaHadadi? What they did it was that they he said, okay, I'm going to mix up, I'm going to mix up the bowl right now. <laughs> You're not going to know which is which, and he, they they did it for each other because Safak Arla is mutter, so they did that. So on that says Rabbi Yechonon, don't permit them to do this. Rather, those that were definitely Arla, you got to destroy, <clears throat> because again, these are they, they, because since they're being lenient. Um, when it's definite Arlo, you have to destroy it. When it's a suffix, you, you, you'll like keep it discreet. And the Hichrez al Pedro Sehen and announce on their parents of those that are lenient, Shatuna Geniza, that they have to be buried. And the Cholo Oimer ain't Arlo, but Chutzlarz. Whoever says that there's no Arlo in Chutzlarz, 
which was what these uh, uh, these opinions had said. Lo yehi lo yinin v'nechad should not have any descendants, as the pasuk says, "Micha mashlich chabel to throw a rope begirul in the lottery bekal Hashem in the assembly of Hashem." So, in other words, he's basically saying that this that he wants to say is on the orla mechutz laretz is is not according to everyone, and to the contrary, it actually. Uh, when it's a suffix, it'll be mutter, but do that discreetly. And when it's definitely early, don't allow them to make it suffix for each other and destroy it. And if anyone says there's no arlo chutzlarts, then he's not going to have a part in Kala Yisrael. And then the Gemara says, okay, the inu command sabaruhu, the uschalifi de bumbadisa, this eif and avimi, that they held, no, no arlo chutzlarts, who do they hold like? So the Gemara, Kirat the town, like learned in the following b'raisa. Says, that in our law, the chutz laaretz, the yeah, the our opinions. Although we said in the Mishnah, chutz marla klayim, that the arla is in chutz laaretz. The our opinions, like this Rabbi Lazar Gadol, that there is no arla in chutz laaretz. Says Gemara Veloy, really? There's no arla chutz laaretz. Not none. In our Mishnah, after the Tanakam, who said that there is the halacha of arla chutz laaretz? Then Rabbi Lazar, who's Rabbi Lazar Gadol, Omer, Av Hachadosh, also Chadosh. As we established, means also Chadesh is forbidden in So obviously, Arla is like he holds like the Tanakam because he's adding on Chadesh. So, how can you say that your Blazer holds <coughs> that there's no Isa Arla in Chutzlarz? So, the Gemara Tenni, you have to amend it to say Chadesh, not Af. The Tanakam was saying that yes, Arla and Klaim apply in Chutzlarz. And that Rebbe is saying that no, Arla and Klaim is like everything else in Tolba Aretz and it does not apply in Chutzlarz. But Chadesh does apply in Chutzlarz because it says the word Meshvei Seichem. Which means and he doesn't hold that Arlen Klein apply in Chutzlart. Now, Amr Reb Asi, Amr Reb Yechanan, who we mentioned Yechanan before, that he had said that Arla does apply in Chutzlart. He just said that okay, when it's a suffix, then you could be lenient, but do that discreetly. He says Arla bechutzlart halacha meishem esina. It's halacha meishem esina, and as we had said that we had said halacha Arla is halacha, and we said oh Reb Yechanan holds. It's not Hilchas Medina like Shemot. It's Halacha Meshem Sin. It's going to be Deiraisa. So that the Gemara says, wait a second. Om lemezei lechabasi. How could he say Halacha Meshem Sin? Babatanya, which is actually the Mishnah we taught before in the Mishnah Mesech this Arlo Safik Arlo. When you have a Safik Arlo, but Aret in Arsa and Aret Tzol is going to be forbidden. The Surya Mutter in Syria is going to be permitted. Which the Gesuris take out the next word, but the Bchutz Laaretz here. But like it, but the question is, if Rabbi Yechonin translates. That in Chutz Laaretz, when it definitely Arla, it's Halacha Meshavisina, it's biblical. How could you be so careless, so disgraceful regarding it and saying when it's a Safik, it's going to be Mutter in Surya, but it's Halacha Meshavisina, it's Safik, the rice is Lachumra, so why are you being lenient? So, Ishtemim Kashachada. So, Rabasi, when he heard this question, he was silent for a moment. And normally said to him, Ema, you know what I'm going to tell you? Kach Nemar. That's how it was said, Halacha Meshavisina. That sveika mutter, the doubt is permitted. Vada aser, and when it's definite, it's forbidden. Thus is in the halacha mishum is not lane. You're right. If it was just a regular halacha mishum, you would say sabik daras lachumra. But the halacha mishum, what the tradition we have for mishum mishum was that when you have a sabik, it's going to be mutter. And now another teaching from Amar Ba'asi Amar Biyichanan says loikin ala klaim, you get lashes for 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 eating klaim a chutzlaretz, or for making klaim. Devat Torah from Biblical Halacha, as Gemara learns later on. So on that, Amalei Rabbi Laza Bar Rabbi Yisi says, "But not now. We learn the Mishnah Masech Zohar that says a kliyim different seifrim. That kliyim, if a better mixture of different types of species, are only rabbinic. So how do you get kli- How do you get biblical lashes? So on that says the Gemara, like cash is not difficult because they're talking about different things. Khan, the Mishnah that in Masech Zohar says it's only rabbinic is b'klai kerem. It's by if a better mixture of wheat." Let's say in a vineyard. Khan, Rabbi Yechon is talking about Kabbas Elon, grafting a tree from one type to a different type. Kedishmul, like Shmuel said, that grafting a tree is something that was forbidden even the Chutzlars. Because Amr Shmuel says, it says, Pasim Yikra, it says, that my statutes they should safeguard. So Rashi says, and in fact, it doesn't say, it just says, it sounds like. Chukim, sh- I mean, so it has the word chukim before the word tishmeru. So it sounds like chukim shechakakti locha kavar. This chukim were here always before I ever spoke to you. That tishmeru. What do you mean? This is the Torah just being given right now. How could they have been here before? Ooh, comes to teach you that Hashem had already warned Noyach and his sons. And these are the chukim, which are what? 
The Pasuk continues, Your animal, you should not go ahead and mate them in uh, different types of species. Your field, you should not plant. Now, which planting of climb am I going to tell you that was that I already told already humanity from before I even gave the Torah? Well, that's similar to an animal, which is a distinct item, which is hard cover, which is grafting one tree and another one because they're, they're distinct items, not like seeds that you don't, it's not distinct. And this is actually where the Gemara Sanedim of Samach and Alpha learns out that B'nai Noyach, Ahuzer, are forbidden to do grafting of trees so therefore we learn that, just like an animal is mating one with another, so to your field is also grafting. And so then once we have that comparison, you could also then add on from this heckish to say it has to be similar to an animal. We're learning out, just like by your animal. It applies both in Eretzel and Chutzlaretz because it's not something to do with agriculture, not with the ground. It will apply anywhere so too, the field, which is grafting, applies both in Eretz Yisrael and Chutzlars, and therefore this is the source of the halacha that the Rabbi Yechanan is saying that Hal Klein is going to be a Dereiser Chutzlars. I, the Bryce has said, the Mishnah says only Midrabon, and depends what. Regular planting in the vineyard, which is seeds, is not a distinct item that's going to be rabbinic. Biblical, however, that's going to be even Chutzlars, and applies even to B'nai Noyach, is going to be a whole tree with another tree, like one animal with another animal, grafting them together, is going to be a biblical even in Chutzot. Yeah, it says that's what it says that in that pasuk it says it says the pasuk you could your test your test. Easy to remember, nineteen nineteen, right? So it says kalayim kalayim shot that these things apply even the Chutzot. But then the Gemara says, wait, but it says your field, which is your field is designated for you, and Chutz is not acquired to you from Shemaim. So the word Sadcha seems to sound like that actually it would only be in Eretz Yisrael. It says, that comes to exclude regarding Kalai HaKerem, planting seeds in the vineyard, Shabbat Lotz and Chutz because the, the terminology that's used is Leisidra, don't plant. So it says, Sodcho, your field, and that's excluding to say that don't think it's any Zeroyim. It's going to be only that of, uh, only going to be of Harkava Se'ilan. That's what it's saying, your field, it's a miut, excluding Zeroyim Shabbat It's not excluding Chutzlarts. The Lord brings the story of Khan and Rav and Habashak, the Bazim Orcha. They were going on the road. Kazulahu Gavro, they saw a certain man, the Kazara Zeroyim Bahadi Adadi. They were planting seeds together, different types of seeds. Amalai said to him, Nasi Ma, let the master come in the Shamti. Let's excommunicate him. He's violating the rabbinic halacha of Klaim Chutzlaretz. We said that Klaim is at least rabbinically forbidden in Chutzlaretz. So Amalai said to him, Loicha Birisu. Says, the halachas of Klaim are not clear to you. Because as you're going to say later on, it's actually permitted. Visu, moreover, they continued walking. Chazula Hugabe, they saw that person because Zorah Chitavis Ari Begufni. Planting wheat and barley in a vineyard. Let the master come in and excommunicate him. He says, Loit Saharisu says the Allah has a climb are not illuminated for you. Because he says you're making a mistake. Loi Kamlan Kribisha. Don't we hold the Kribisha? Lama that he says that the violet Kalaim is only Achayizra Chita Usaira the Khalitsan. Only until you plant wheat, barley, and a grape seed, bimapoilis yad, with a handful, which the reason Rabbi Isha says Rashi, we, I, we don't know where he learns this out from, that you need to have two different types of seeds and the third one as a grape seed. But Taisus does tell us, he says, the Pasig actually sounds like, and it says, Karmacholi Sizr Koloyim. In other words, you need to have that it should be climbed before it comes into the vineyard. That means to say you have wheat and barley. Karmacholi, your vineyard, Lee Sizr I mean, you plant the climb in the vineyard, which means to say you need to have wheat and barley when you're planting it in the Vineyard, but the Allah says Rashi of Mapilis Yad that we learn now from a pasuk in the Baruch Chabes Malay Sizra Karmacho Kalayim, which sounds like that the planting of the vineyard itself has to be with Kalayim. So therefore, what's the problem that this guy's planting seeds near each other? It has to be these three types. It has to be Mapilis Yad, and therefore, until you do that, you're not going to be violating the Allah, and therefore, we're not going to excommunicate this person. Now, the Gemara brings another story that Rabbi Yasef, he would actually be Ma'ariv 
Bizrani Bizara. He actually would um, mix together seeds and he would plant it, not in not in the vineyard, but he would go ahead and plant it. But but climb is rabbinically forbidden, as Rashi explains, and the assumption is that even Klai is royim, even forbidden seeds, not there's two types of climb. There's climb of a karim, of a vineyard, these two different sukkum in the Torah. And then climb of Zroim, of seeds, of just planting, let's say, wheat and barley, different types of seeds, are also forbidden. Just like an air itself is forbidden in their rice, so that it would be rabbinically forbidden. How are you, how you mixing seeds together and planting them? Amalays, Rabbi Yisrael said to him, like, Kash, it's not difficult because Khan, when do we say it's rabbinically forbidden? Bekla'i Akadim. That's only in Chutzla, it's going to be forbidden if you're planting in a vineyard. Khan, but when am I doing it that it's permitted? Bekla'i Zroim is in the different types of mixture of seeds. So on that says the Gemara, why? Because Kla'i Akadim in the forbidden mixture of a vineyard, Be'eretz in Eretz, it's very severe. It says pentiktash. It's going to be forbidden to have even have a benefit in it. So bechutz, so it's not because of our rabban. So bechutz, so the rabban will go there too. On the other hand, kalai zram when it's forbidden mixture of seeds, the eretz lies to rabban. No, in eretz yisrael, it's not forbidden to have any benefit because it does not say pentiktash because we learn it from a different pasuk of satchol yisrael kalayim. So bechutz, so it's not because of our rabban. So bechutz, even the rabban will not go there on the isra of kalai zram. However, hadam rabbi yisrael subsequently retracted himself and says, "Lav milsi dami." What I said is incorrect. That I said they were not glazed on Kalai Zerma You know why? Abba Maisa Rav. Literally Rav. The Rav, the Amoira, Zodah Ginsa the Beirav, he planted the garden in the yeshiva, which was for the, for the students that they could have vegetables to eat. They had this vegetable patch that Rav was planting. Mishade, Mishade, he went and he planted it in different rows. My time, what's the reason? Isn't it because, although they were in Bavl, Chutzlards, but they were concerned about the mixture of the different seeds being a problem by climb. You see that even by regular seeds, it is a bit in, in Chutzlar, it's not just by that of a karam, which Omar Abayah says to him, it's not true. Bish, Lamesh, I mean, you're right, you would have a riot to retract if they would say that he did, as you continue to the base, Arba al Arba Ruches Aruga, that he did four uh, different rows on the four different directions of the rows. But Achas Ba'am said one in the middle, meaning if he would have planted in one row, and he would have kept a gap between the rows that they shouldn't nurture one from the other, like the Allah learned in the second Shabbat of Pedal and Beis. So Shabbat, then you would learn out from that, that you're right, you're not going to plant Kalayim and Chutzler. El Hochab over here, now that he planted each type in its own row, that's not because of Kalayim, that's because of Mishim Nai, it just looks nice. Ovi Nami O Mishim Tircha de Shamohi, it's just simply that because he didn't want to be a the Gabai, the Shamish, to go bring the vegetables, you know, Pin is going to have to have another machine that he's taking care of. Of a, you know, it's it's just too much to go get every single one. So therefore, he just had it separate. You just know which row it is, and it has a nice number. And therefore, that's why. But it's not a raya that Zroyim and Tris actually proves from here that that Rav Yisra actually is correct halachically, as as Abai told him. It's not true. You don't have to retract. And that 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 is what the halach would be. That it would not apply in Chutzlads that of Kalai Zroyim. Now we can take a look at the next Mishnah. Uh, an interesting Mishnah, but continue on this theme that we, we would be speaking about really in these past Mishnahites regarding the mitzvahs that apply here, apply to women, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the men and not women, and then regarding applies to Eretz Yisrael, and not in and similar idea regarding the mitzvahs, says the Mishnah as follows. Koloise mitzvah achas, very appropriate for this time of the year. Whoever does one mitzvah, which doesn't explain what does that mean, but mativan loy, they do good for him, which sounds like in, in this world, umenichan lo yomav, and they lengthen his days, and he inherits the land, which is the life of the world to come. But, whoever does not do one mitzvah, they don't do good to him, they don't let and he does not inherit the land. However, the Gemara asks from the famous Mishnah, Mesechta's Peah, what do you Gemara says, seems to contradict what the Mishnah says in Peah. We say in Bechazat every morning, these are the things, that a person eats its produce, the dividends in this world, by Kenneth Kamer's like my ball, and the principle remains for the person in the world to come. Elohim, what are the things? Is keep it up aim, honoring your father and your mother. Bigimel's chasad and doing acts of kindness. Vachnas archim and bringing guests. Vava shalom in the machabere and bringing peace between the man and his fellow. But Tama Torah connected to man. The learning of Torah is equivalent to all those things. Okay, but one thing we see from this mission is that to pay it. That's why we say it because we say with Tama Torah connected to him. That's why we say with Bechaz Torah. But we see that these things. A person eats the Paris and the Karen is Kayemis. But another mitzvah, not. The problem is, our Mishnah taught anyone who does one mitzvah, 
he's Mativ and Loi, which means he gets in this world, which means he gets in the next world, which is the principle of Perisem Bal Nazer and Kerkibs Lemaba. Well, if it's everything, why is Mishnah Mishnah Zepay is saying it's only these things? But Madam Rabbi Yehudi says, Hachikama. Our Mishnah is saying a different idea. It doesn't mean just any one mitzvah. It means like this. And this is where it's very important for this time of the year. What does one mitzvah? If he does one mitzvah more on his side of merits, then Matibim may do good to him. And we're going to consider it as if he's Makayim the entire Torah. Says the Gemara, Mechlal, the inference is, the Hanukh, what? That those other ones, Afil Bechadanami, that even one also, meaning, as Rashi explains, that you're telling me that in our Mishnah, when we say you do one, we do good, means to say you were equal. You do one more in Tchus, oh, okay, it's like you did the whole Torah. But that sounds like that means the Mishnah Mishnah is Peya, that you're not, let's say, more on your side of Tchus, it's even if you didn't do it in any of the other mitzvahs. I mean, your majority of sins, and still you're going to be the same with Mazer, but can't give us like my bow? So, when Rabbi Shmaya says, no, Lamech to say, Shema is a shkula, very interesting interpretation. That if you were equal, this that the Mishnah says in Mesech is Peya, Eiludvarim, the famous Mishnah that we say, is talking about when you're Mechza Avainus and Mechza Schuyas, which, like we're saying, this time of the year, everyone officially is half and half. We're all baying them now in the Sesame Chuba. And in the half of the schuyas are one of these mitzvahs. Keep it out of You call your mother every single day. Ah, then machras. Then that's going to tilt the pan as if you had roiv schuyas and you don't need to have the mitzvah yisera of our Mishnah. Now, when you don't have one of these things, you don't do any gimel chasadim, you don't have any guests, you're not a peacemaker, you don't learn any Torah, then you're going to have to have what our Mishnah says to do one more mitzvah to tilt it and make it that you're going to have roiv schuyos, and then you'll be able to have matim aloi and marich la yama v'shnoisa. Which Taisa asks a very interesting question, which is very relevant for this time of the year. He says, "Wait a second, you're telling me that if you have any one of these things, if you're equal, it'll make it as if you have roiv schuyos." So, what do you mean? Even besides that, the Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah of Yazim and Alf, we say this in Yud Gimel, we read this again, 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 through Hashem's Meitzu, Hashem is Rav Chesed. What does it mean Hashem is Rav Chesed? So, Gemara Rosh Hashanah says that when they're equal, Hashem is Mate Klapi Chesed, he tilts as if it's most of the Chesed. So, why do I need one of these things? Automatically, Hashem is going to make it like that. So, Tesis, what you could say is that when you have, uh, by other mitzvahs, when his actions are equal, then he's like a Bainani. And you're right, at the Bainani, Hashem will tilt it to Bechesed. But if you have any one of these things, you're a Tzaddik, Gomer. So it's so interesting how many ways you can think about this again for this time of the year. If we're all Bainim and you do, you do Kibbut Abbe'im, or Gemaz Chasadim, and saying, and then it's making you like a Tzaddik, and Nechtav, and Tram, Al Tal Chaim, you know, who knows how he translates it. But Akavam, just to simplify it, what the Gemara is saying is that interesting. That this that you the Mishnah and Peya pick specifically these things, they're both Mishnah are talking about when you're equal, when you're Baini. Mechza, mechza. How can we all be exactly? That's how we are. Most of us are Baini. So if you're Baini, our Mishnah is saying, can you do one more mitzvah? Hashem is say, if you have one of these, you don't have to. Your Tzadik Gomer is like as if you have Reb Schuyas, if you, if you do Kibbut Abbe'im, or Gemel's Chasad, Machnas Archim, or any one of those items. But then the Gemara asks on this and says, wait a second. Is that really true what you're saying? That Bechol. If someone does one more mitzvah, more than his merits, then they do good for him? So you're telling me the guy who has 51 to 49 of tzchuyis versus that of chayvis, so this guy's going to get the good life. But it seems to be contradicted from the following b'risa. The b'risa actually says the inverse, says the exact opposite. Whoever has more merits than the merits, merian loy. In this world, he has it not good. The guy's always looking for a job, and the guy never has this a car accident, whatever it is. The guy, and this guy's a good guy. Why does he get bad if he has more schusim than, than chayvis? To clean him out from his sins, that he should take a full reward in the next world, 
which is might as well lose over here and you get over there. Yeah. So the Daimi Kimisha sort of called Torah Kula, and it's like as if the entire Torah was burnt. Like even one letter wasn't left into whatever that metaphor is. He gets a really hard life, this guy, who has more schusim than dreves. Someone has more sins than merits. Ah, Matibanloi, they do good to him. Why is this guy getting the good life? How come this guy gets this yacht? How come this guy gets this play? How come this guy gets everything? Oh, because they're paying up his reward of his mitzvahs in his lifetime to chase him away from the world to come. The guy that you're jealous of is the guy that you come to the next world to Nitzchi and say, this guy, this guy, we gave him everything. He gets nothing. But David Kimishai Kaim called Kula. This guy looks like he's even Kaim the whole Torah, as if he didn't miss out even one letter. Akapanim, even though it's an interesting thought to get into this, Brisa, but the main thing the Gemara is bringing it in for is a contradiction. You told me that what? That you're translating our Mishnah. That if you do one mitzvah, if he was equal, equal, and now he's more schusim than chaybiz, oh, then he gets the good life? Uh, the Bryce says exactly the opposite. The Bryce says then he gets the bad life. So on that, Omabayi says, Masnitin, our Mishnah that says, we're going to be mativin omarian, we're going to do good or do bad if he has schusim or chaybiz, is the avdin le yoim tab the yoim bish? Is that we do for him a good day or a bad day? Actually, my colleague is Rashi and tells you how to translate this. Rashi says, someone that does an extra mitzvah, which now he's a majority of schuyos, so they prepare for him in this world a yomtiv, meaning the yomtiv is that they punish him, that they collect from him his. Sins. And that's preparing the Yom Tif for him for the world to come. That's what our Mishnah means when he's in Mativ and Loy. Mativ and Loy doesn't mean, yeah, they're doing good for him over here. It's like when you go to the gym and the guy says, okay, you got to do another 10 push ups. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're going to be wearing that swimsuit, you're going you're gonna to look good. Okay. That's what the Mishnah is saying. And if you have Avoidness Marubin, which is saying Marie and Loy, they're going to do bad for him. So you know what? You could take the day off. You don't have to work out today. You look like a schlub when you're going to go out there. No problem. That's where the guy feels, yeah, I got off today. You got to go watch the game, right? No, 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 because they're preparing for you a bad day. Where they're paying you up your reward of your mitzvahs over here, that it should be prepared for you a bad day. That's how, Ra- that's how Rashi explains what the Gemara is answering. Yes, it's like the Brisa says. It's Marie and Loi in this world of your Rebbe's Kliyas. It's Matib and Loi if you have Rebbe. So what's the Mishnah saying? The Mishnah is saying, Matib and Loi, <laughs> right, by, by, by punishing you, is Matibanoi for the next world. Um, Taisa says uh, differently. He says that when the, when the, when the Mishnah says, Kolo Isa Mitzachas, he says, Chaisa Matibanoi, the Tzaddik generally has a Yom Tev. He has a good in this world as part of his, his reward. And Mechol Shein the Mitzachas and Matibanoi, the Russia generally has a Yom Tev, he has a bad in this world as part of his punishment. But the Brice that says, Kolo Shein the Mitzachas and Matibanoi, he will occasionally have a Yom Tev. A bad day as a tomb for his sins. The Russia will occasionally have a yom to a good day to be worth. So according to Taisis, it's not so extreme. It's more fathomable. It's like it's, it's, it's saying that, you know, once in a while, the, 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 the tzaddik is going to have a bad time. The tzaddik has a good here in this world, according to Taisis. Not like Rashi. Tzaddik has a good life. He has the best life. Once in a while, he's going to have a tzara because they're getting a little bit that, that he has to, you know, no, ain't tzaddik ashi asa tebele yechta. So you can get a little bit of punishment. The Rosh also has a terrible time in this world. Once in a while, the guy's mom is living the high life. His mom is like cracking open that Miller and he's like, you know, smiling with that three seconds till before and then over Right? So that's also once in a while because the little scar that he that he deserves, he's getting it all over here. Akaponim, that's the resolution of the steer between the Mishnah and the Brisa. Now, Rav Amar, he says that the truth is like we said before, that Mativan Loy means no. It's not necessarily for the next world. It means the reward of the Paris, yeah, that he gets here in this world, if he does one more mitzvah, and the principle means for the next world. But ha, mommy, who is the town of the Mishnah, of the, of the, of the, of the Brisa, that said, that not like our Mishnah, the Mativ and Loi. He says, no, if you have Rav Schuyas, it's Mari and Loi. That's Rabbi Yaakov. He holds not like our Mishnah. He holds the famous phrase, Schar Mitzvah Hayamaleka. No, you don't get reward for mitzvahs in this world. You're not going to have the Paris. In this world, you're not going to have a tibun loy. The time like Linda Bryson, Biakavayim he says, 
In the Chol Mitzah, Mitzah, Shekzu Batayra, there is no Mitzah as written in Torah, Shemat Tzachar Betzid, which the Torah actually says explicitly that you're going to get good in this world. It says on the side, reward. It's not really true. It's, you don't have that Mitzah, She'in Tchiyas Amesim Tuliyibar, that the revival of the dead does not depend on it. In other words, that that it's telling you you can get reward is letting you know that it's not really here. It's, it's for the world to come. As he explains, he said, when it says, B'Kib It Aim, it says if you honor your father, your mother, it says, that you should have lengthy days of my need to be be good for you. So you think you can live till 120? Not necessarily. But Shalucha King said, when it says later on, by sending away the mother from the nest, it says, the should be good for you, and you should live a long, day, long time. So he says, imagine like this. Imagine his father tells him, go up on top of the building, bring me the birds. So he's doing these two mitzvahs. That it says in the Torah, you shall live a long life. And he goes up to the tower. He sends away the father, the, the, the mother bird, and he takes the, the baby birds. On his way back, he falls and he dies. Where's the good life of this guy? Where's the long life he's supposed to live? That's not true. We see people do keep it up, we see people do a shluch again, they die three weeks later. Means to do good for you for the world is total good. When says that you have lengthy days, means to the, to the world that's totally long, meaning it means for the next world and not for over here. So therefore, the time of the Brisa holds that you're not going to get good in this world for doing a mitzvah is like Rabbi Yaakov holds schar mitzvah It says the Gemara, wait a second, what's your raya? Maybe that never happened. <laughs> In other words, maybe it is a guy will live a long life if he does keep it up. Aim. Maybe he will live a long life if he does again. How do you know that it means for the next world? Who said this ever happened that you're proving? Says the Gemara. No, Rabbi Yaakov Maisa Chazer. Rabbi Yaakov saw a story. He saw a Maisa. He saw a boy by it's being told by his father, go get the bird, send it away. And on his way back, the kid fell off the ladder and he, and he, and he dropped dead. So he says, it can't be that it means in this world and therefore he dies and it means in the next world. Says the Gemara, but what's the Raya? But Dilma, maybe that moment, Mahar Ba'averhava. Maybe that guy had, had, had he was thinking about something he saw earlier that day on his phone, and he's thinking about it, and 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 he, he therefore he wasn't doing it Lashem Shemai. Maybe he was thinking about some sin. Says the Gemara, that can't be why the kid died. Because Machshavara, a bad thought without doing an action, and Akadish Baruch Matzavalamaisa, Kadish Baruch does not go ahead and combine that to an action, and therefore he should not have gotten punished. When he was performing the mitzvah, it has the guarantee of Laman Yarich and Yomov, and therefore just having a bad thought should not have caused him to get harm. Which interestingly, Taisa brings that by non Jews is exactly the opposite. A good thought, a bad thought, Kaddish Baruch actually combines for an action, and we consider as if his bad thought was done, and a Machshava Taiva, Hashem does not combine. For an action and Tosafot brings rias either way, which is the opposite about a Jew. A bad thought the Kaddish Baruch does not combine for an action, but a good thought a Kaddish Baruch, as we're going to explain shortly, does combine. But by Goyim is the opposite. It says, "Come okay." But maybe he was thinking about idolatry when he when he was doing the shaluah haken and doing what his father asked him. What? Oh, so the Gemara says, "Ksiv." The pasuk says, "Nicheskel l'man tefayis es beisisol belibam." To snatch the Jewish people in their heart, meaning that they, they snatch in their heart the thoughts of idolatry. The Pasuk is telling us that they're going to get punished for even Hidhude Avaidazar. So Avaidazar is different. So maybe you're thinking about some type of a getchka when he was doing this Shalom Haken. says, Gemara, No, this is what Rabbi Yaakov is saying. Isa you think to say, if there's reward in this world. So then that's what his point. Amaylo Agen Mitzvah Salah. Then to the contrary, why didn't Mitzvah protect him? It actually protects him. He shouldn't even come to do an Avera to think he thought of by Dezara. It should have protected him from that. And if that would have been what caused him to die. Obviously, it's Amalek, and therefore didn't protect, it did not protect him, stop him from thinking about thoughts of by Dezara. And therefore he died. Obviously, the reward is in the next world. And that's what the price was like. But then the Gemara says, How's, how could you say? Did you be active? saw this story and therefore he changed his mind and said it can't be the reward is in this what's in the next world but it can't be that story even happened because of Allah says, someone is on the agency to do a mitzvah doesn't get harmed how could it be that this boy died doing two of the greatest mitzvahs says, no that teaching of Allah was when you're going to do the mitzvah here the boy was on his way back 
after doing the mitzvah. Says the Yeah, but Amir Rabbi Lazar says Shluchim mitzvah in the second Lebal Chasam Lebal Chasam Chasan. Someone's on the agency to do a mitzvah doesn't get harmed when not when he's going, not when he's coming. Says the Yeah, but Sulim Ruah Hava. It was a shaky ladder. The Kaviyah Hazeka that there's an established uh, element of danger of harm. Chaleicha the Kaviyah Hazeka whenever there's permanent damage. That is that you could you have to yeah you could you have to suspect that harm is going to happen. Lisa Mechina Nisi Dala rely on a miracle, and therefore it was fit to get punished even as going to do a, a mitzvah. That's so like it says the pasuk Shmuel Aleph. But Yemesh Shmuel Shmuel said Tashem Ech Eilich How could I go B'Shama Shal B'Haragani Shal is going to hear and he's going to kill me. And even though Hashem had sent him, you see he was afraid from Hezekah de Kviya. So you see that, that you're not an excuse even though Hashem tells you to do something that. There's a there's a great chance of getting harm, and therefore it's possible that the boy died, even though he was uh, on his way back from doing a mitzvah. Now going back to what we said before, my he says the moli darshi achel haikra. Had it if not for if acher had have had had darshan the pasig of the manita blacha, kerbiyakev babrate like kerbiyakev who was the son of his own daughter, because that it means to oylem haba. Had he darshan it loichata, he would not have sinned because as Rashi says. He saw the same type of a story. And when he saw this, he says, must be there's no reward for, for doing mitzvahs because the Torah is, Torah is a lie. So it says that you can live a long life. And I saw this boy die. And therefore, he went off to, he went off to the other paths because he said, it, it must be wrong. It says, Gemara, the Acher Mayhi. What was the story with Acher that made him go off? Yeah, he saw the same story. He saw a boy doing shluch akin from Kibbut Aveim, and the boy died on the ladder as he was coming down. Some say, Lishna the chutzpah samatrugim mechazah. Great, we say this by Asagar Rugim Malchus. The tongue of chutzpah was a great tamachacham, was an interpreter and the translator of all the great Amiram. He, they, he saw his tongue, Dava Gordele Dava Acher. He saw that there was a swine that was dragging on the ground, and Ami said, Pesh, a hippic margolius. The mouth that let forth such pearls from his mouth, Yilachich Afer, will be kissing the, the, the dirt. And he went out and he sinned because he couldn't be soivel that such, uh, such a travesty, such atrocity, that the Hashem would let such a thing. And therefore he, he, he was Yatzal Tarvis Ra. Now, Rami Rav Tuvi by Rav Kisna the Rava. Now, Rav Tuvi by Rav Kisna posed the following contradiction to Rava. On the one that's now we learned our Mishnah Kolo, we say Mitzvah Achas. So Rabbi does one Mitzvah, Mativin Lai. They do good to him. So Asa En sounds like okay. If he does, yes. Lo Yasa Lai. But if he doesn't do, then not. But in Minna seems to be contradictory. Then the Brisa says Yashav Lo Yavavei. If someone just sits and doesn't violate a sin, Nusim Lischar Kaisa Mitzvah. They give him rewards if he performs the Mitzvah. Why are you saying only if you do active? If you're fifty fifty, you're not serious to be true. And your mom is a baby, you got to do one Mitzvah. What do you mean? It's enough not to do an Avera, even passively. It's you get the reward as if you did a mitzvah too. Why is it only also mitzvah achas? Amalei says, no, hasam over there, when it says if you sit and you don't do a sin, that it says you take reward for that, it doesn't mean you're just sitting on your couch and every second the clock, the odometer is going and you're getting mitzvahs and mitzvahs because, hey, look, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't rob someone today. I didn't murder someone today. So, hey, why not? I get mitzvahs. No. That's talking about uh, and the opportunity of a sin came to him. He has a pop-up. He has some type of, someone left a whole amount of sum of money somewhere. And he overpowers his inclination. And he has Shabbos there, and he has this, this the thing that he wants to do on Shabbos, doesn't do it. Then, and he is saved from that. There's no greater mitzvah than that. That's where he's going to get reward for controlling himself and not violating his sin. There was a certain noble woman that propositioned him for Znus. Amma Milsa, so, so Rav Hanin Bapavi said something, some type of a spell. And he made himself full of boils and scabs. So Abdihi Milsa, so she also knew this whole sorcery, and she, made, she said something, and she healed him. So Arik Tasha he went and he hid himself in a bathhouse. And the Chihava Island Betrain, Afili Bamama, when two people go into the bathhouse, even during the daytime, which usually daytime there's not so many uh, Shindalids, Mazikin, and, and two, two people usually also is not such a problem, still have Masaski, they would get harmed because there were so many Mazikin, it was like, it was like with their, their pub, you know, with the Mazikin. And he, he went in there by himself. The next day the rabbi said to him, who protected you? 
how would you make it out? Everyone, whoever goes in there gets Mamash much harm. Amalahu, he said to them, there was Shneas, he continued to have a memory of Noise Kesa, the two carriers of the Caesar, Shamirun Nikol Laila, the two guards of the Caesar, they, they protected me the whole night. Amalahu, they said to him, Shemit Varvey Bali Yatcham and Itzaltamena, they obviously knew he must have done such a great thing to be saved like that. Maybe there was an element of, of immorality that came to you and you were saved from it. They found in the Brisa called Abod Varvey Liyodai. Very appropriate for today's generation. Whenever it comes to an opportunity of licentiousness to a person's hand, the needs of he's safe from it, he doesn't press the button or he turns it off or whatever, he looks away. They do a miracle for him, and therefore you must have had something like that that you had a dvave, an opportunity, a beautiful woman, this and that, and you didn't, you stayed away, and therefore you're protected. It will be to have Nisim done for us like that. Thank you for